it's not very usual for someone to say, do you know what, I don't have this, I don't have the funds to go and build out or to go and purchase one of the CMSs back in 2006. I guess the crux of the question that I wanted to ask you after all this, because we've spoken about this in the past, is would you recommend building a CMS? Hello, welcome to Digital Signage Explored. My name is Tim from Signage Live, and with me today, I have a very special guest, Roland from Bonn, Germany. Roland, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, hello. Roland, you reached out to me actually on Reddit when I asked a question saying, would anyone want to talk about their digital signage experience? And you messaged me saying that you've built your own CMS. And I was, ever since you said that, I was hooked on the idea. And I've told literally everybody in the business, I'm going to go speak to someone who built their own CMS. When did you start looking at building digital signage? Yeah, it, everything started in 2006 when there was a rather urgent need to play some videos and some display some images in a sports mm -hmm. arena. And yeah, I had about two weeks of time to do <laughs> to manage to, to provide a solution somehow. And being a software developer, yeah. I figured, okay, I can write that quickly enough and it worked. Okay. So yeah. you, 2006, you get this urgent question. We need to go put some screens out. I'm assuming, was it just a few screens or one screen or? Yeah, it was two screens, which were mirrored. One computer was enough, one screen yeah. more or less. Yeah. And then obviously you've got a development background. How hard can it be? Let's just go and build a, a, a simple software that just delivers out content, images, videos to those devices. Is that kind of the, the crux of it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And now obviously as that progressed, your, your experience with the digital signage started to grow, right? There was more screens, more requirements, more definitions and function. Is that kind of how it went? Yes. A little bit of background. Starting in 96, I started as a volunteer at the local basketball club, the Telecom mm -hmm. Baskets Bonn, um, where I more or less helped with DJing. And then in 2006, we got LED screens around the court, so court mm -hmm. sides, so screens. And that's when I originally hoped to use the manufacturer software, mm -hmm. but it turned out that it didn't really work well enough. Again, I wrote some software for that mm -hmm. purpose. And at some point I figured I have the court side LEDs and I have on one hand with a specialized software and I have the screens in the arena with another software. And then at some point, additional LEDs would come into the arena. And then mm -hmm. I figured, okay, I can write one software that is configurable. And yeah, it grew and grew over time and it works pretty well. <laughs> so how many displays are you managing today? Today we have still two LED screens in the arena mm -hmm. now and 11 LED modules around the court. Mm -hmm. And these are more or less the problem <laughs> that my software had to solve because the original mm -hmm. software wasn't able to reliably play 11 videos perfectly in sync. So that was a function, obviously, that you were looking to do is synchronize the content. Was, it, was there something missing? Did you go down the route of having a look at other software solutions at the time? I started looking, but it became clear that that everything that was available for free or for little money mm. wasn't really, really enough. And yeah. there simply wasn't the budget for a um, big commercial solution. And it wasn't even clear of the com whether the commercial solution could actually solve the problem at that time yeah, and, and within the constraints of time for market research. Yeah. And I think especially considering you're talking about 2006 at this point, the market was in its infancy almost at that point. There wasn't a huge amount out there knowing where it was at the time. You would have really struggled to find a sync tool without it being phenomenally expensive, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 Uh, one must consider that when you're looking at NBA arenas, mm -hmm. they have immense budget, a huge budget. And in Germany, basketball is not that popular. It's a becoming more and more popular, but it's nowhere near the German Fußball Bundesliga football right. yeah. league. So mm -hmm. everything was done on a tight budget. And on the other hand, that's the beauty of the th uh, whole thing because it gives me lots of freedom to build something. Yeah. 
And obviously you have a development background, yeah. so that's what spawned you to do this. Yeah. And when we were talking before and just getting familiar with each other, I said, what's been the value for you? And you said, I wouldn't do it if if it wasn't something for me to tinker with anyway. Yeah. It was like to keep honing your skill in terms of development. And this was just an outlet for that. Yeah. So I started out as a software developer and uh, since 2012, I'm more into product design, user experience design, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I don't code that much at work. And so in order to keep uh, my skills sharp, I like to write software in my spare time. So that's a lot of fun. On the other hand, when writing larger software systems, there are a lot of mm -hmm. things that are not that much fun. For instance, yeah. building something trivial like a setup, yeah. code signing, taking care of synchronization and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I can imagine, and full disclosure, I'm not a developer. I, I work around a lot of developers and some of the terminology rubs off on me, but synchronization is a pretty complex thing to build in. Think about time codes, network codes, or whatever you're utilizing to capture that. Did you, do you have a rough idea of, you know, how much time over, over the period that you spent on it? Is it something you picked up every now and then? Is it something that you're going into the code on a monthly basis? How often would you say you're tinkering? Oh, that's a good question. So there were times where I could only work in the summer because mm -hmm. the preparation for each home game took so much time. For some background, the home games are not just the actual game time. We have a mm. pregame show, which is roughly an hour with interviews, games, information, stats, and so on. And mm. all of this has to be somehow presented with digital signage. Then we have the actual game, we have halftime, mm. we have timeouts with cheerleaders dancing. We need live cam camera and everything. Especially the pregame show took lots of time to prepare yeah. because everything was more or less handcrafted. In recent years, more and more could be automated with templates and so on. So now I'm actually able to work on the software during the season. But right. it's a lot of time that went into it and still I goes imagine. into it. Yeah, I imagine. So have you at any point, obviously in the last five or six years, reevaluated the digital signage marketplace in terms of software and hardware and what's running now? No, actually, no. I looked from time to time at OBS and vMix, which are more like broadcasting. So yeah. we have this weird mixture of uh, at times we are more like a TV show. At other times, and especially on the courtside LEDs, it's more like traditional digital signage yeah. with playlists, mm -hmm. with sponsor times that have to be guaranteed, with reporting how often certain spots are displayed and so on. Yeah. That is really curious to me because you say you are like this amalgamation of a pure CMS system and then more like a broadcast system put together and it's by your own design, right? So there must be benefits because you're code inside and out, everything about the user interface that you've built, you know what the limitations are and the functionality is. And you've got this kind of fully encapsulated experience that nobody else has access to, right? This isn't like a software that you've passed on to anybody. It's just purely built for your spec. Yes. Yeah, so it's especially in, in recent years, so that... Obviously, other people can work with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good that I'm also a user experience designer uh, at my day right. job. That works pretty well. And yeah, th at some point, I actually did think about maybe turning this into a commercial product. Mm. But just a short thought about what comes with it showed me, no, that's not an option. That's no. when I the fun stops. <laughs> right. And then you have to then you have to start commercializing it and actually making the product yeah, and, scalable and, in that way. And the the problem is there are two kinds of clubs. There are uh, those clubs that c could use such a software uh, mm. very well, but they don't have money. <laughs> and right. those clubs that have money have got solutions in place. Maybe right. even doing everything by hiring an agency. So mm. they just give the money and then don't think about it. There's really the question whether there would actually be a market for a software like that. Yeah, it's, that's really fascinating because you say it is bespoke to your needs, but obviously your needs are going to be somewhat comparable to other sports venues in that area. 
One, when you started, and obviously you've, you said you've taken a lot of hours to build this out and you've built it bespoke and now you've got some additional users coming in to, to manage the content. Was there any point where you just went, this seems like it was more effort than it's worth? Or has it just been fun for you from a development perspective to, to get your hands dirty with it? Yeah, there was a critical point in time when I had to choose which technology to use. So mm. I started out with some C-sharp.net, simply display things on the mm -hmm. screen. Then I started using Windows Presentation Foundation, which mm. is a technology that is okay, but doesn't give me that much performance. And at some point, I thought about moving to another technology, and mm. so that didn't work at all. So at some point, I really had to think about, okay, am I able to reliably play videos, especially playing videos reliably in a loop over many hours yeah. really turned out to be a problem. And so at some one point, I actually thought about maybe this is a bit too much. But mm. then was the time when working with HTML and web browsers mm. became really easy, especially using the technology in your own software without relying on an actual web browser. HTML and the web is the, I would say, one of the most optimized render engines available mm. and especially reliable because if something doesn't work, people cannot uh, go online shopping. <laughs> yeah. And it's really powerful. So many of the animations we have on the screen, especially during team presentation, they are done completely in HTML, some CSS. So mm. a visual designer could uh, create new animations and uh, plug them in. So this is very powerful without programming mm. even. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it sounds, and again, I have to reiterate again, I'm not a developer. If my language skills start to get a bit lackluster here, it's because I don't know certain terminology. What you have now is so engineered to your needs that you have all of these kind of, as you said, like plugins, things that you can add in. Is there more on the development pipeline for you? Yeah, definitely. Managing data like Teams, team logos, mm -hmm. team photos, player photos. This, I started preparing some things in this direction some years ago, but I will now do a lot of things in this area because on one hand, we have the games in the German Basketball League, then mm -hmm. there is the European competition, but there are mm -hmm. also mm, some activities, the, the Telecom Baskets sponsor a children's league and every right. year, children of different ages, they have a, a huge competition in the telecom dome and they are presented like the professional players. Right. But in, okay. in cool. this case, we have the names of eight teams with 12 players each and mm -hmm. have to manage this and maybe the names come in the very last second, uh, just before mm -hmm. the team presentation. Managing this is one big part. And then another part will be integration with the app that the Telecom Baskets just launched. So that uh, people okay. in the arena can participate in activities and the results are visible on the screens, for instance. So is all of the hardware that you're running at the moment, is that all Windows-based or is there a mixture? This is all Windows-based mm. and it's rather old hardware but it's enough because rendering with HTML is so powerful. When the question of hardware upgrade comes around, is that going to be a massive sticking point for you or do you feel like it's going to be a pretty easy transition? That works pretty well. We started out with just one computer and now it's just a matter of running the setup, copying some files and then the computer's ready to go. The software can be distributed. So I have a server and something I call the cockpit to control the whole thing and the display and that can be distributed on up to three computers, but mm. it can also run on a very weak old business laptop. For instance, the LED screens that are behind the hoop construction, mm. these are very small, these and uh, simple old IBM laptop sufficient. It's fascinating. It's really interesting. And I was so excited to have you on the call because I think it's, it's just, it's not very usual for someone to say, do you know what? I don't have this, I don't have the funds to go and build out or to go and purchase one of the CMSs back in 2006. 
I'm just going to go and do that myself. And most people I think would be terrified of that. Obviously your development background has given you a little bit of freedom to go, I know the basics, let's go and expand from this. I guess the crux of the question that I wanted to ask you after all this, because we've spoken about this in the past is, would you recommend building a CMS? If, no, you know, you're... definitely not. <laughs> no, there are so many things that are, I, I would call solved problems. So if you have, mm. have the chance to get some ready-made solution, maybe with the opportunity to plug in your own stuff in some way, I would definitely recommend going for that, especially if you don't know whether the people who work with the system um, are available in a couple of years. In my case, it was pretty obvious that I would stay in Bonn and working for the long, long term was never a problem. But yeah, no, I would definitely not recommend it. Uh, maybe if you have a very specific vision how to do things. Mm. But even then, I would recommend looking at what are ways to integrate in existing solutions. Just yeah. because there are so many bread and butter functions like uploading yeah. files, managing mm -hmm. files, tagging, synchronizing files, creating playlists. Um, there's so much and you have to write yourself that it doesn't really make sense. And now from the way the industry has moved on, obviously when you first started, this wasn't around, but there's now API functionality that you could plug into and be like, okay, these are the functions that I want from my platform. Why don't I just go and find a provider that I can pull that function from an API and then I can start building more customized. I need this and that, and maybe I want to create like a media server or something, but obviously all of that wasn't available to you at the time. So I think it's, it's just incredible. We've talked about at Signage Live a, f a few times, you would never want to go and build your own CMS because it's just going to be, we, we've had customers that said we're going to go and do that but inevitably after a year they come back around and say okay maybe we're not going to do that we're going to try we're going to go, we're going to go down the signage live route and it's just it's it's a massive success story you've obviously achieved some incredible stuff with your software and it's just uh yeah i think it's an, a testament to if it's something that you love to do you might be able to do it but realistically if you're not going to sit down and be developing this forever it's probably not the best option yeah if i would have to start now Again, I would definitely go with a solution that offers some kind of plugin functionality. Yeah. Roland, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming on the call. I was ecstatic to get a, a session organized when you explained what you'd done. And, and just thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Speak to you soon. <laughs> Goodbye.